Welcome to Regional Programs Monitoring Support um, Cohort Training. So if you're watching this, you're probably in cohort for monitoring this year. This is the monitoring team that you will get to know. I am Jennifer Gleason, and I will be your contact person for the monitoring process. Um, the team's leader is Colette Sullivan, and we also have Carly Thibodeau and Ashley Satry on the team, who are wonderful and helpful, and Julie Pelletier, who keeps us all together and helps us know where we are supposed to be. So there are currently eight regional programs in Maine. Here they are. Um, there is some required annual documentation. Um, MUSER requires that we get an update every year um, of any changes that happen. So this will get emailed to all of the um, regional program directors in the fall uh, just to know any changes in staffing, programming, or anything else. And that is required by the regulations. Monitoring is also required by the main statute and regulations, and you can find the relevant areas here. These links are um, live. They should work in the PDF that hopefully you, hopefully it's right underneath me here when you're watching this recording. Um, but you should be able to click on these links and get those statutes and that the statute and the regulations and that is about uh, the monitoring process and the program approval process which are intertwined. So the real basics is that the monitoring process leads to school approval. Um, at the end of it all you will get a summary of findings and your school approval letter will be issued by the commissioner. Um, IEPs themselves are reviewed through the monitoring of the sending SAUs because they're still responsible um, for that student. So the IEPs and all the required forms will be monitored when we do those SAUs. So we're going to go through the timeline of events. So in the mail right now, is your letter letter of notification, and that is sent to the fiscal agent and the program director. If they're the same person, they could be. Um, so that is happening right now. In mid-June, you will get an email from your DOE contact, um, and it will have all these timelines that we're talking about right now, your on-site visit date, and any forms that you need for this process, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So that's mid-June. In October, you may or may not get an email with certification errors. So um, if you don't get an email, that means there were no staff certification errors. So don't even worry about that at all. And we are gonna talk about how to fix those if you do have them in a couple slides. November 1st is when your pre-visit evidence is due, and that is your cooperative agreement and your regional program plan. Sometimes they are in the same document, sometimes they are not. Um, so make sure if they're two different documents, you send them both, and you can send those to monitoring.doe at name.gov by November 1st. Monitoring visits are either in November or December. And we will want to look at your program, the facilities, and all of your files. We're really just looking at the files to make sure that all of the um, required paperwork is in the file. And we will look at the process of the student being placed in your regional program as well. Um, a lot of SAUs are going to electronic files. They don't have paper files anymore. So if you are one of those, that's fine. Um, we're working out 
how to access those files. So we have a couple options. We can, um, you can provide us temporary read-only access to your system and we can look at files that way. You can create PDFs for us to look at um, or you can print a copy of all the required documents which are on this next slide. So these are the things that we will be looking at. A written notice from placement, the written notice from the 30 day review, all written notices and IEPs from at least the last three years and copies of the most recent evaluations. So if you're going to make PDFs or print, um, those are the things that we need. And if you have any other ideas for how um, we can look at electronic files in, we're just looking for a way that's easy for you and easy for us to, the most efficient way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, so that is the on-site visit, which will be in November or December. And then by January 15th, we'll be looking for the post-visit evidence and which you can also send to monitoring.doe at main.gov. And this will be your related services grid, which we're gonna talk about on the next slide, as well as evidence that any staff certification errors have been resolved. So this can mean that maybe in NEO, when the staff was put in NEO, maybe the wrong title was selected in the dropdown, um, or maybe they were in the process of getting certified and now they are and you could just send us a screenshot of um, that from the certification website. Sometimes this report um, is not right because we are, um, we're trying to cross-reference NEO with the certification system and they were not made to talk to each other. So if you get a report and you say, no, this person has this certification, just send us a screenshot from the certification website and we will be all good. Related service grid. So what happens here is each related service provider fills one out over a five week period. So you have to plan ahead for this one because it is due January 15th. Um, so any five week period, they, fill this out um, just to show that the um, services are being provided. And then on January 31st, we will issue your summary of findings. It will come by both email and postal service. If there are any instances of non-compliance, you will also get a corrective action plan and that will include a detailed document of um, which file had which findings and why. Um, it's mostly just certain documents probably weren't in the file. Once that summary of findings is issued on January 31st, um, we will send word to the commissioner's office and you will get your approval letter. All evidence of correction, if you have a corrective action plan, is due November 30th. So it gets issued January 31st. It's due November 30th. If you get if you correct things earlier than that, just send it along. That's no problem. You don't have to wait. And again, that goes to monitoring.doe at main.gov. That is a secure email. And we are the only ones, the monitoring team is the only ones that have access to that. Um, and again, you'll get that document with child specific information. If you have questions, we are always here. We are here to support you and get you through this process. No worries, we got your back. So that's it. That's the whole process. Um, I, I just do wanna point out that the pre-visit and post-visit evidence really does need to come in on time because we're issuing your cap January 31st. So if we don't have those things and we don't have time to review them, they're gonna show up on your cap or corrective action plan. We have some resources for you just that we give to everybody. And these links are live on the PDF. The procedural manual is a great 
um, resource for all IEP and all other um, required forms. We have MUSER, of course, the main unified special ed regulations for some light bedtime reading. This is our IEP quick reference document. It's from the 23-24 cohort because we haven't worked it out for the 24-25 cohort yet, but also a really good guide for writing IEPs. And another reminder, evidence can go to monitoring.doe at main.gov. We also have a special section on our website just for you. Um, those links at the top are live again in the PDF. And if you go to the monitoring and support site and go to resources, there is um, a group for regional program resources. So that has things like the um, related service provider form if you lose the email or um, it has the approval, the program approval grid as well. So that is all the things that need to be in your um, cooperative agreement and regional program plan. So that lays all that detail out for you so you can make sure you're compliant with that. And here we have some helpful links to different sections of our website. If you would like to give us feedback on this or any other PD, we love to get feedback. Um, we, we do change up what, how we do this based on feedback and you will also if you put your email address in you will get a contact hour just for watching this you can find the doe online at all of these places and this is our contact information for the um, monitoring team actually reach out to us anytime i am jennifer gleason and i'm going to be your contact person so at, reach out anytime with any questions. We really are here to support you through this process. So thank you very much for watching.